rhyme. Let's look at a, a few different types of rhyming that you'll find in poetry. The first is called full rhyme. And uh, full rhyme is a pair of words ending in exact sounding vowels and consonants. It's an exact match of sound, not of spelling. So let's look here and see what we have. Spring and wing. Okay, when we look at these two words, first of all, when we talked about the definition of rhyme in general, we said that the beginning sounds have to be different. Well, we have that here. We have sp and w that are different sounds. Um, and so if you wanted to connect those and say those do not match, a little anti-sign there. And then if you want to look at the rest, ing and ing, these are a match. Okay, So they start with different sounds and they finish with an exact match. That means that you have a full rhyme, ing and ing, match each other perfectly. Again, the spelling is not what we're looking for, and that's a common uh, pitfall, is for students to think, well, they're spelled the same, therefore they must rhyme, or they're spelled differently, and therefore they must not rhyme. It does not have to do with spelling, which is a relief to some of us, right? It all has to do with how the words sound. Let's look at this different example here. We have cat and we have hat. Obviously, two different sounds. Those do not match. A at are an exact match, and so we have a full rhyme. Um, why would you use full rhyme? It says full rhyme produces a clean and predictable effect. Okay, it's the sort of thing that Dr. Seuss uses. Right? You just know what's going to come next. You can anticipate what's going to happen next, and everything falls into place. And for a very, very young child, you know, three-year-old or a four-year-old that you're reading a story to, they can anticipate and there are no surprises and everything's happy all the day long. This is full rhyme. It's an exact match at the end of the word. The, the second kind of rhyme that you're going to...